All right, this is Scott from LSStack.com. Um, we're working on our 1999 Dakota RT truck, um, getting it ready for the LS motor that's going to go in it. Um, right over here is the motor that will go in it, and uh, the next step is going to be preparing the motor and getting it ready for the truck. Um, that means we're going to have to take the wiring harness off most of the hoses and probably a lot of the accessories on the front just to kind of get it uh, in a more compact uh, um, package so that when we go to put it in the truck we don't get hung up on a bunch of stuff. Um, so this is how the motor came shipped to us. We got it all unwrapped out of the bubble wrap out of the crate and we put it up on a good solid working um, platform so that we can move it around and also be able to reach all the way around the motor. Um, I'm going to start by just unloading all of the little hoses and things that are on it. Um, power steering hoses will probably drain a lot of fluid if they've got anything in them, so I'm just going to kind of hang them down. Um, and I'm just going to kind of feed through here and see what I've got to do. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the evaporator purge valve and the purge hose. When they removed it from the truck, they cut it off, so I just put a blue piece of tape on it so I know that it needs to be replaced. Okay, using the same 516 fuel disconnect tool that we used on the truck, we're going to go ahead and get this connector apart. This is the hose that was cut off by the salvage yard. Okay, we're going to retain this because we're probably going to have to use a uh, custom fuel line uh, from the uh, hose shop. Um, so I want to be able to take that with me once I get my measurement and be able to hand that to them so they can give me the right connector for my vehicle. Um, Next thing we're going to do, we're going to get this PCB hose out of the way. It actually broke off. It actually broke off during shipment right here. So we'll have to replace that little fitting at some point. That's why I've got blue tape on it. We're just going to pull that right off. Put it in our bucket. And I'm going to leave this on here just as a reminder that that's broken and needs to be replaced. Um, I did have one coil that broke during shipping, so we're going to have to replace that. Um, that'll happen. You just kind of have to be aware of things like that. And as we look around the motor, all I'm looking for is anything that's broken more than anything. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start taking the wiring harness off of the vehicle. Wiring harness extends all the way back to the... Um, to the transmission, and it has, also has um, the rear O2 sensor connector that comes all the way to the back. Um, so I'm just going to kind of work in order all the way from back to front. And um, if I wasn't videotaping this, I would be writing down and numbering all these connectors. Um, but since we'll have videotape record of this, I'm not going to. Okay. Um, starting with the transmission, this one just lifts up and out, and that goes to the transmission TCU that's built into the transmission itself. I'm going to go ahead and come on around. This is the crankshaft sensor, and that just unclips. Um, the thing about these trucks that you'll find, um, every connector seems to be just a little bit different. So you just have to take your time as you work your way across your wiring harness and make sure you don't break these off because if you break these off it's a real real pain um, to have to replace them and you don't always get a good connection and that connection can lead you to fault codes or electrical problems down the road so it's just a real slow process of taking everything apart taking a good look at it making sure it's in good shape So now we're all the way back around on our harness. We've made a complete circle. Um, you see how quickly it goes once you kind of learn how these connectors work. That everything just sort of pops apart. Coil pack. Another coil pack. Um, these are injector sensors or injector triggers. Coil 
coil pack and coil pack. Look at how these injector. Oh, you know what? I didn't have to disconnect those coil packs because uh, the connectors here for the wire harness, they are, they're all mounted on a rail. So I'm going to put those back. See, they all mount right here on this connector. Uh, so in order to get these injectors apart, what you do is you take and you lift up the little green until it clicks. That allows you to squeeze in on the gray. And they come right off. Okay. Looks like this is the, uh, this goes to the um, evap solenoid, the blue one. One thing about these as they've done them over the years is they've made the connectors pretty specific. So as long as you lay the wiring harness onto the vehicle in the right order, and you don't rearrange too much, you can generally just find the way they lay and they'll go right back on. And it's really, really hard to get them messed up because the connectors are very specific to their application. That's water coolant uh, temperature. That's what that is. Because that's a coolant passage right in the head, and that's the temperature sensor for that. Um, as I saw in a, one of the videos, they uh, tapped that out and replaced that with a different sensor for a gauge. So once that's loose, I'm going to come around here and I'm going to undo this. They're both 10 millimeter tension supports. And as soon as I pull that out, I'm going to thread the bolt right back in because that's why I know where it's at for later. Now I should be done on this side of the motor. It looks like I've got everything. Let me put my nut back on here. This is uh, this one on the top is the intake air temperature sensor. So this comes down to a ground right here on the front of the motor. So I'm going to thread that right back in so I know where it went. And then this is um, throttle position sensor here. That is. So that's that. And the back of the alternator charger. That goes to looks like that is that must be some sort of a speed sensor. RPM, probably not RPM, but it's I thought the other, I thought the crankshaft position sensor was on the back. I'm not real sure what this one is. And then there's this entire harness comes around the front underneath this little plastic clip. So that's the knock sensor. I'm guessing I'll have to look some of this up because I'm not familiar with some of these. The way they do this, you can't unlock, you can't undo the nut to get the ground off. 
until you cut the uh, because it's all pushed together as one assembly, you know. See, as always, they make everything to be pushed together, nothing to come apart. Okay. Let me put that back so I remember that's the ground. Now we'll put a little piece of blue tape on that. Okay. Something on this side, it's exactly the same. Right here, it's screwed into the block. I'm guessing it's something like that. I need to look up on the schematic, figure out what it is. Okay, get that loose. See with him. I can't see. There's this plastic. Ah, got it. It's like a guide down here. So these little clips hold that under there. Now this is AC control right here. That's this gray one. And then right over here we come down to oil temp sensor maybe in the oil pan. And starter. That's okay. Let me, take it. Let me get I think it might be 13 again. I think that's the same size. That's funny, it's loose. I wonder why the starter was loose. That's weird. Oh, that starter looks old. The okay, last thing I need to do is get that off right there. Yeah, 5 sixteenths. That would be the wire harness in its entirety. There we go. And I'm put a little piece of blue tape on that just to remind myself that I did that. Um, we've, uh, we videotaped the sequence in which we took it off. Um, you can either videotape it or take pictures or make notes or whatever. Um, it's probably important to go back in the order it came off as best as uh, possible, um, of course. Um, but there really isn't a whole lot to it. If you think about each and every one of the sensors, you already know what most of them are. And so um, since all of the plugs are directed at the particular um, plug hands, it's really hard to get them confused once you get your wiring harness laid out in the right order.